everyone, and welcome to the Nunez Nunchi podcast, where I do deep dives and reactions to some of our favorite K dramas with special guests like Sophia, aka Beauty Unplugged on IG, all about the skincare. Look at her gorgeous hair and skin. Look at that. <laughs> So we'll talk about that too, because you know, K-beauty and all that stuff and the K-dramas. So I'm super excited to have you, Sophia. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. This is so awesome. I told my husband what I was doing and he was like, wow, that sounds really cool. That's so cool. And I forgot to mention, you are also a family physician. So super busy. So I appreciate your time. And we'll be talking as much as we can in a short amount of time on on K-dramas and of course, K-beauty. So that said... Let's talk about your journey into K-dramas. Like you are a fellow Korean American, but I don't want to assume that all Korean Americans are already into K-dramas. You know what I mean? So talk mm-hmm. a little bit about your, just how you got into them or your experience with them. Yeah. So I came to the U.S. when I was five and a half. And I remember the cassette tapes that my parents would rent from the Korean markets. Oh, you know, they would get 10, 20 at a time then turn them back in again, you know, and so I would watch some of those with my parents and um, the earliest recollection was Oshing. And I just remember bawling my eyes out. I just, I don't remember. I've seen that one. Yeah. That was oh my mom. gosh. It's, it's like a saga. It's a really, really long, very yeah. sad. I feel like really that's emotional. how a lot of them were back then. Like those sagas. a lot of those K-dramas back then, I'm saying back then, I'm not going to assume age, but you know, <laughs> they were like dramatically sad. Yes, like I would yes. watch them for my mental health. Every single one was just so gut-wrenching. I appreciate that, you know, the modern K-dramas are a lot, there's a lot more lighthearted romantic comedies and just, yeah. And um, I, I watched Ocean with my mom and that left a big impression. And then I can't remember too many key dramas after that, but um, Chiltu was another one that was real made a really big impression on me. Yes, yes. So we're yes. around the same age. I'm probably <laughs> older, but um, either way, you know, it's in that it's in that because Chiltu was 1992 or four or something like that. It's in the early 90s. That's what yeah, I remember. Yeah, so. I that I want to say just just for nostalgia that probably has to be my all-time favorite k-drama even though I don't remember all of the plot Mm -hmm. but it's interesting how the k-dramas from longer ago like 10 20 years ago kind of molded my perception of what is you know appropriate and inappropriate in relationships right so the older k-dramas the kiss happens at the 20th episode or the very last episode, right? Right. And then right. even with my husband, if we happen to watch a key drama where the kiss happens, like the third episode, he's like, oh my God, this is too. Whoa, like this scandalous. is so racy. <laughs> it's like, what just happened? It's not PG. Yeah, yeah it's so yeah. funny. It's so funny. <laughs> mm-hmm. That is hilarious that your husband thinks that too. Yeah, yeah. And then um, my father's always been into more of the period um, mm-hmm. K dramas, and mm-hmm. I don't. I no offense to anybody who loves them. I just can't get into them, and I think it probably has to do with my mental block with the language because I came when I was young, and we moved at a time where um, it wasn't encouraged to keep the language, and so mm-hmm. I was discouraged from speaking Korean at home, speaking Korean with the siblings. Yeah, and it wasn't wow, until you were high school. Discouraged. You were actually yes. discouraged. Yes. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. They, I guess they just never thought I would lose it or they didn't think mm. it was as important because now we're in America. Mm-hmm. Um, but mm-hmm. in middle school, they changed their minds and said, okay, well, we're going to send you to Korean school now. But, you know, that I was, was sitting next to five-year-olds and I was not motivated to really, you know, but I think I still have a decent ear for the language. So mm-hmm. I have the subtitles on, but I understand a decent amount, like 70%. And um, me too. But what's I'm cute 70%. is, yeah, I still need yeah. the subtitles. I'm like, what did they just say? What was that? You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's really interesting about K drama is that, you know, I think that for English speaking TV shows, you could have the volume really down low and maybe have captioning or whatnot, but the Korean, you need to hear the emotion and the, the loudness and the, you know, so, and it's really obvious when my husband is like, turn up the volume. And I'm like, the subtitles are there. He's like, no, but I want to hear like the, the, I go and the, ah, you know, 
<laughs> That's hilarious. Like, is your husband also Korean American? No, he's actually German Irish. That's fascinating. So he loves hearing that. Like, yeah, he likes to call himself a um, an egg. He's white on the outside, yellow on the inside. Oh my god, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he basically he he does all the research for what to watch next for K drama, and he's been on a big spiel of like watching all the Korean like crime movies and crime shows and like mm -hmm. the detectives action and yeah um he's really dived deep into it so my dad lives with us so he'll ask him Appa, have you seen this one and my dad will be like oh yeah i watched that a long time ago it was good it was okay <laughs> like they bond oh, yeah, I love your husband. super cute he's got to be my next guest hmm. <laughs> Because you yeah, know or we could come on together and we could do a battle. Like that's what you need to do. Because I'm telling you now, I love talking to men who love K dramas because they have a different perspective, right? I mean, yes. so tell your husband, yes, I can't wait to meet him and think it's so cool that I want to just imagine him as a German speaking, wanting to hear that I, you know, I go omana. You know, <laughs> that's awesome. And he calls your dad appa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's so sweet. <laughs> so wow. So you have okay. So you have a dedicated history but then and then Chu Chu kind of brought you back so what's been your experience since are you like a consistent watcher an avid watcher like you can't live without them that kind of thing yeah yeah I think initially you know when my husband and I got married we would watch periodically and then just over the years it's kind of morphed into okay what's our next key drama but he is like he's able to watch them slow like one episode at a time oh. like per night and so I kind of got to a point where I was like, honey, don't get mad. I'm going to watch some key dramas without you. And he was kind of hurt at first. And then now he's kind of okay with it because he'll watch some of the darker, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. more the themes that I'm like, I, I can't watch too much of that. It's too much. Whereas for him, it doesn't phase him at all. So we have our own separate K-drama thing. Um, but we always have a pact. Like if we see something and we're like, oh, that looks good. We have to save it for each other. And then we'll oh, watch. I love that. I love it. I love it. I totally, I totally endorse that. And I think that's cool. Yeah. My husband's a similar in the sense of he'll watch like, though, again, then again, I did watch Squid Game and DP, but he'll watch the intense ones. And I'm like, you know, remember I watch K-dramas for my mental health. So I can't watch those. <laughs> <because> it's like <laughs> It just triggers me, you know? So um, that's funny. That's super cool. So I love that you watch with your husband. So then tell me, well, just your experience with K-dramas and how you related to your own life. Cause we find obviously we watch them and not just being Korean American though it does hit like a certain note for us because mm -hmm, it's so close mm -hmm. to home but tell me a little bit about your emotional experience with them or like how how it's been watching them uh, you know in relation to family and work and your your life yeah yeah so one of the things that really came across to me in something in the rain so the first episode it just felt so depressing I put it away and was like, I don't think I want to watch that. And then I came around back to like a couple of years later and I really did enjoy it. And one of the things, it's not a spoiler, but it kind of helped me understand my mother mm -hmm. in a way that I didn't really, I, I think I kind of knew, but it, it just kind of, when you're watching something and you're like, that's my life, you know, it just kind of, I don't know, it gives validation to how I felt about certain things. And it didn't necessarily make it okay mm. that I was made to feel a certain way by family members. So basically, I feel in, it could be a generalization, but in the Korean culture, the closer you are, and mother daughter is kind of as close as you can get, right? Yeah. The closer you are, the more that family member feels it is their God given right to be as honest mm. and sometimes as cruel as they want to be and not ever need forgiveness. That's or need to ask for well forgiveness. said i i see that mm -hmm. and it's like you know that adult child you know me the adult child i would never i kind of understood you know that apology is never coming so it kind of helped me bring closure to the i just need to be able to move on but i don't necessarily need to confront her because the things that she said wasn't because she didn't love me or that mm -hmm. because she hated me or wanted me to suffer, but it was just matter of fact for her. Mm -hmm. mm. And, you know, when you watch key dramas where there's a lot of family members or close friends, like it looks like they're yelling at each, at each other and nagging. It's just how they show that they care and that they're familiar with you and they love you. And 
it sounds really backwards, but that's just how it is. Well, I mean, I think that's really, really important of you to say, because when I was a child, and I'm sure you acknowledge, we didn't, we don't, we don't see it that way. We're like, they're yelling at us. They're being so mean. You actually used the word cruel, which is pretty strong. And mm-hmm. now let's tie it in with something in the rain that mama. Uh, yeah, I could see what you mean, because her words were super like sharp. You know, mm-hmm. and, and some of the scenes where she was just very, I don't know what's what derogatory. I don't even know what the word is. It's just very, very um, cutting, you know? So that's interesting. So you've related to your mom. Well, can I ask about how it, do you feel like you're still in the process of healing from that? Because that's not easy when you see something and you know, forgiveness is not necessarily what's going to, or asking for forgiveness, sorry, is what's going to come about. And we, I, I understand that because that's part of our culture you know, not necessarily in reconciling that where you are, where are you today having watched that and understanding how it's affected your own mental health? Yeah, it's kind of interesting because, you know, she was living with us for a little bit. And right now it's, you know, my dad living with us and my mom is living closer to my brother. And I, you know, when she moved to Southern California, that's, that's literally the first time that we've ever been more than like an hour or two apart you know I went to school pretty close by so I was coming home once a month I was always like just a phone call away if there was an emergency I would come home and help and um it was kind of liberating in a way but also it made me question like why am I feeling liberated was I oppressed (laughs) and I think I kind of was because there was just this unspoken expectation you're you're my daughter, you're the eldest, um, whatever I need or want, like you, it's just expected that I take care of it. And I, and I just did. And I think that's that whole like fil- um, filial piety and the, yeah. And not questioning, just doing, and, you know, as a physician and a mom and a wife, it, having a busy schedule, I could be in the middle of clinic seeing a million patients and juggling a lot of things. And my mom would call me and call me and call me and call me. Like it would ring 20 times. And oh I would finally have a second to call back and say, is there an emergency? What do you need, mom? And she's like, why didn't you answer the phone? And I said, oh, well, I'm at work. I'm seeing patients. Um, does something happen? No, I just wanted to say hi but you didn't answer the phone. So then I got worried and then I had to call you and call you and call it. See, you um, made me call you. And I was like, and she knows oh. you're a busy physician. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hear you. So that, that probably was stressful. <laughs> yeah. I it's, Oh, there, there's just, there's probably way too much to unpack in just a short um, podcast, but basically the whole perception of you know, when I would come home from work, I would look kind of tired. And when she used to live with us with my dad, she'd be like, why are you so tired? What do you, what, what do you have to be tired about? I'm tired. I was at home, like, you know, cleaning up the house for you. And so I'm like, we don't want you, you don't have to clean the house, mom, but my work is stressful. Yeah. And she's like, oh, you don't know what stress is. (laughs) Yeah. Mm. You hit a nerve in the sense of, I hear that a lot from Asians, Asian American students or youth today that their parents will, you know, in some sense, uh, what's the word dismiss or, you know, downplay the stress that they have, which is why it's stressful. Then you get more stressed out because your parents are like, what are you stressed out about? That's nothing. You know, studies are, that's how you have to be stressed out. That's how you live. Right. Where, you know, I see it differently in the sense of, well, you don't have to like literally be suffering. Um, and then you can't talk about it at home. So that's interesting that you bring that up. So something in the rain. Yeah. Let's point that out. There's, there's a few scenes, but then you got through it and you felt it liberating. What I was going to ask you, what made it liberating? Just that it's okay to go against that filial piety and that it doesn't make you a bad child. Mm -hmm. Mm. Because I think it was just ingrained that that's, you just have to do that. And just even the fact that my mom isn't living with us goes against my whole, like, ever since I was a child, I just assumed I'm going to take care of my parents. I'm the eldest. I'm the daughter. That's just how it is. And I never asked for help from my siblings. It just never even crossed my mind. Um, But yeah, the other thing, um, hometown cha-cha-cha, 
Yes. So we both finished it recently. Again, this is not a spoiler at all, but Mm. watching that show and the evolution of like discovering secrets and things like that, right? I I realized um, I had never actually cried on my mom's shoulder ever. I had never, ever gone to her with a deep sorrow or something bad that happened that I needed comforting Mm. from her. Like I always had to comfort myself. Mm. And, um, you know, my dad is a typical Korean dad that didn't talk much, but he was, you know, he was reliable and he did the best that he could, but he, he wasn't a talker. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and it it just kind of blew my mind because with my children, I would want to be the first person to give them a hug if they're crying or looking sad, or it was just, it was, that realization was really odd. Yeah. That's interesting. So watching hometown cha-cha-cha, you're watching, I guess, in some sense, mothers or community consoling their children right yeah yeah also the fact yeah and also the fact that there is healing in grieving and if you never get a chance to grieve there's no healing and I I guess I'm kind of stuck in that space ah yeah just turning to therapy no I'm kidding Um, (laughs) but grief is a big part of healing you're right but grief grief is so hard I mean people study grief for years and it's like there's just no timeline like you could be doing okay. And then all of a sudden something happens, you know, yeah. or you watch a K drama and you think, oh, this will be fun. But then something not triggers, not that, that, that might not be the right word, but something reminds you of something and you're kind of like in a different place. So then how yeah, would, but, yeah, go mm-hmm. ahead. Oh, well, I was going to say that. Uh, so you mentioned triggering, but you know, the thing about K dramas is that I, I feel like they do a really, really great job at closing the loop for you. So I never like, watch a K-drama and feel broken, like more broken. I feel like it helps me see something and feel something or relive something. And it gives me like a sense of not necessarily closure, but just that it's okay. Hmm. And that, I, I don't know. It, I said it so well. That's, that's how I was like this going off. <laughs> and I love everything in circles because that's how I see mental health. So I love that. You're right. That's why we I mean, that's a big part of K-dramas, we, unless there's a season two, but we know it ends. We know there's closure and we know that somehow by episode 16 or 20, it's going to be wrapped up. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and so even with Hometown cha cha when everyone was not really a spoiler, but when everyone's like, oh my gosh, what's going on? What are the secrets? What are the mysteries? And even I was like, let's try to figure it out. You just knew in the back of your head, don't worry, by episode 16... <laughs> yes it's going to be all laid out and we'll all be like that's what we you know that's a good thing that we learned about it so that's a great point thanks for sharing that so did you watch that with your husband he didn't watch that one with me um he watched um squid game and we watched dp yeah together and then now we're watching my name together oh yeah my husband's watching that how is my name it's it's very very different it feels like an action movie Mm-hmm. Um, but it's in a K drama and it's, it's very empowering for, for women, I think, because she is just so badass in this. It's yeah, just very different from She's like, you need to watch this. I'm like, oh, give me a break to get over hometown Cha 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 before I start something, you know, even though it's already been playing, but yeah, <laughs> it, it makes you want to take up boxing basically and just, you know, kick some ass or something. Oh. <laughs> That's so funny. Kick some ass. I love that. So now let's talk a little bit about what you do. I mean, beauty and uh, uh, beauty unplugged because you're a physician, but then you have this Instagram and I love seeing the skincare. I mean, does, how does that tie into K dramas? Right. I mean, I know my own connection with that, but I'd love to hear you <laughs> on skincare, K dramas. Yeah. So it, it was all kind of accidental. I just, my skin was just such a mess after the second um, child was born and I'd really let myself go. I, my hair was all over the place. I was wearing like old sweats, like on non-work days. So a weekend outing, I'd be wearing like a t-shirt that might have a hole in it, baggy sweatpants. And I had really bad melasma, um, dry skin, early wrinkles. I just, I just, I didn't care. And I was tired and I felt gross. I I guess Mm -hmm. I really let myself go. I was wearing maternity pants for five years. What? I just didn't care. I just kept rotating the same maternity pants and wearing them to work like week after week. And then after a while, I'm like, geez, I've been wearing these for five years. 
Uh, oh my gosh, Sophia, like what, well, what made you let yourself go? Because there's a reason usually behind that. I think just psychologically, I, I mean, my skin was just falling apart. I, I didn't feel like I had control over the melasma and I, I just kind of felt like, I think this is just what's supposed to happen. You know, you have kids, mm -hmm. you're working, you're getting older. Yeah. It's just the yeah. beginning of the end, right? Like why even bother trying? I mean, that, that was my, I had just kind of come to accept it. And thankfully, one of my office mates had her like little way of reaching out to me without saying anything. And she put some BB creams on my desk. And I was like, what, what are these BB? I don't know what BB cream is. I said, is a foundation. I don't, I don't really need any new foundation. She's like, no, try it. You know, it was developed in Korea and like, it, it looks good on the skin. And so she gave me like six tubes and I was like, you want me to try wow. all these? Wow. But you know, they look terrible because my skin was so dry and so dull. And yeah. then she said, okay, let's go to Sephora. So this was like 2015, early 2015. She's like, let's go. And I'd never been in, in a Sephora before. And she picked out a couple of things for me and my skin like kind of bounced a little bit just kind of looked more refreshed and then I started researching mm -hmm. skincare products and ingredients and I got to a point where my friends were like you should start a blog or something because you're learning a lot and we all want to learn too and so I started out kind of a private account for a few months and then they're like just make it public because lots of people will want to learn blah blah so then I was like okay fine but I want to be anonymous I, I just don't want like it's scary out there the internet and you know <laughs> yeah so yeah, so for, for several years, I didn't have my name on there. I didn't have family physician on there. I, I didn't even show my face on there. Mm -hmm. I just posted my reviews and people were interested because none of them were paid or sponsored posts. It was just stuff that I was buying or being sent, yeah. you know, without any obligation. And, um, you know, I learned a lot through trial and error. And then I, I started looking into, um, K beauty because a friend gave me Charlotte Cho's book and I started mm -hmm. reading it and I was like you know I should really look into it because if I think about like the K drama people they they spend a lot of time on their skin yeah. and they look good and you know like too perfect so, to be honest but that's yeah <laughs> yeah so then I I primarily go to K beauty for hydration nourishment gentle hanbang yeah. Um, like medicinal ingredients. Yeah. And then I, I look toward Western for things like, you know, retin-A, chemical exfoliants and things like that. Um, mm. And then sunscreens kind of a range between Asian and Western, but I much prefer the West. I mean, the, the Asian, especially the K-beauty yeah, sunscreens. I love my sunscreen. Mm -hmm. Hey, <laughs> and then, um, and then eventually I showed my face and everyone was like, oh my gosh, finally we get to see your face. And then I revealed my age and they were like, oh my gosh, you're that old, but you look good. <laughs> like, I'm 47. I, I don't care. I'm, I'm, I'm like, seven. oh, hey, we're the that's why I knew it. When you said, when you, I know we're saying this on the podcast, when you said two, two and all, I'm like, no, no, she's in my generation. She's in my age. Yeah, I'm 47. <laughs> I'll be 48 next year, early next year. Okay. Okay. So I'm yeah. And then um, it wasn't until the pandemic that I kind of, you know, put out that I'm a family physician because there was a lot of misinformation. And when I was posting things uh, to my stories, I got a few um, curt messages saying, you know, stop spreading, you know, propaganda. Like, what do you know? Like, oh. you know, and I said, well, actually I know a lot. And then I said, okay, I'm a doctor. <laughs> yeah. And not only that, I worked really closely with infectious disease and the, like I did a lot of regional work, um, giving information about COVID vaccine testing. You know, I was coaching a lot of the phys other physicians on how to counsel patients and mm. just how to triage and all that stuff. Yeah, no, you, you should, you worked hard for that, but I get it. You know, you were trying to stay anonymous and the internet is crazy. We're Gen Xers. So we're still like, oh my gosh, the internet's crazy, but, um, but that's super cool. So I love that you did that now tie in K dramas and, and K beauty. Like how has it helped your mental health? Like both of them in general, because obviously you really got into this and I see your skin is gorgeous. So, <laughs> and we see gorgeous skin on K dramas. I love to hear both processes of mental health, K dramas, mental health and K beauty. Yeah. So the K beauty, you know, I mean, it's, it's now considered a misnomer, right? That 10 step skincare, whatever, but you know, at some point I was incorporating all the steps and trying to do it and see how my skin felt. And my skin felt and looked good, but it wasn't just the skin. Like I just felt like 
I was taking care of myself. I was showing myself love. And the other way it manifested is my husband saw, oh, like she's like brightening up, like lighting up. And so he would encourage me, like, take your time, like 30 minutes, just do your skincare. And like, I got the kids and you, you know, because back when I first started doing all that, you know, in 2016, the kids were a lot little or so I felt right. guilty taking any time for myself but he really encouraged it and so I just made it a habit every morning every night without fail actually the first couple of years I was posting twice a day wow my morning routine and my night routine it was just kind of a ritual and the ritual kind of became my self-care mm. and I would really look forward to you know the end of the day when I can do my skincare and share with everyone what I was using so and as my skin got better with the skincare, I mean, I wasn't expecting miracles, but I, I do feel like I almost aged backwards. I mean, when my kids see pictures of me from 10, 12 years ago, they're like, mommy, why do you look so old in that? You know, like they think I look old in those pictures of me in my thirties. And, and to be though. honest, my skin does look better now than back mm -hmm. then. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I, I, and I along, will contribute to that. I feel like my skin yeah, looks yeah. better now because I'm well, the older you get, you want to take care of yourself better because you're like, oh, I'm not any younger. You look amazing. You look oh, amazing. thank you. But a sunblock, you know, got it with, the, yeah, I put on sunblock, um, some cream. It's like a, a, a pia. Is that a cream? Yeah, that's a, a pew. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, I love it because it's light. I hate the greasy feel. But anyways, mm -hmm. I'm diverting. But the whole point is you're right. It does make me feel better. Plus, if you look good or, you know, and you see yourself, you feel good, Right. So I yeah, think that's a yeah. big part of it. Yeah, big part of so it. So following that feel like feeling more confident about my skin and just seeing my skin look healthier, I just naturally kind of started taking better care of my hair. I started like actually buying clothes that look better. I, I tossed the maternity pants. Good, I'm glad. <laughs> and now I'm all about girly dresses with pockets and like trying to add color to my wardrobe and just you know, trying to keep this and in, things interesting. And my husband really appreciates it. He's just like, oh, you look great. Like he loved every time I wear a different outfit, he's like, that looks really good on you. Or like, oh, your oh, husband sounds amazing. <laughs> good job, husband. Just tell, just tell him I said that. Um, that's awesome. But then, okay. So then let's talk about K-dramas. How have they helped your mental health? So they help in different ways. So one way is just life lessons, things that I wasn't aware of that just kind of comes up to the surface because of the show. And then, and again, the nice thing about the K-dramas is that they never break me. Um, they actually just kind of help rethink things that I have felt, but couldn't put into words or could, you know, couldn't validate for myself. The other is, you know, with the pandemic, it was the first time that K-drama actually helped mental health wise in terms of needing to escape mm -hmm. and kind of mm -hmm. divert all the anxiety about the virus and about people being sick and you know the risk to my family and my father here and um just when the stress got overwhelming I think the k-dramas really helped take you away mm -hmm. there's a lot of you know tv series and things like that that can do that but I, I feel like nothing like k-dramas just really pull you in yeah. and just kind of take you somewhere else and so I think that's why people binge it because you can't it's just stop. so engaging <laughs> yeah yeah and well, I think the first, go ahead. the first k-drama that I was like wow this is really really good like it felt like a good mental break was um crash landing on you mm -hmm. I'd never binge like that because my husband always kind of paced us but that was one where I think I finished the whole thing in three days over a weekend it. or something wait so you mm -hmm. finished it without your husband I watched that one without him, but he would periodically kind of watch along with me here and yeah. there. So he kind of, he basically knows the whole story. He just didn't right. watch it. Yeah, but three days. No, you're right. I mean, Crash Landing was a great one. That's awesome. But you hadn't binged before Crash Landing? Not I think really. I wanted to, but it's, I think, okay, it's probably a good thing that my husband would pace us because then I would like stay up late and be tired the next day. And just, you know, he's very disciplined. <laughs> mm, I love it. No, that's good. He's that's unusual. Cause a lot of us aren't, 
we're like one more episode or the next 10 minutes of the first next episode to see yeah. with goblin yeah. he would like if i would say just one more he would be like okay just one more oh goblin yeah oh gosh some of them so speaking of which uh, aside from crash landing that you were binging what's some of your favorite k dramas I'm a big romantic, so like those really epic love stories I really like. So Crash Landing on You, Goblin, um, Coffee Prince, mm -hmm. um, My Love from Another Star. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, ha I definitely have a new appreciation when there's a K-drama that kind of pushes the envelope of like social norms or like things that aren't really talked about, like it's okay to not be okay. Um, and even Itaewon, you know how they had um, one character who's not in the social norm. I'm, I don't right. want to give anything away, but yeah, yeah. that was mm -hmm. a really nice surprise. Yeah, Although they, they didn't really, mm -hmm. they didn't really address it head on, but it was kind of like, you know, in yeah. there. Yeah. Well, I feel like they addressed it in the sense of it came from this person. Uh, mm -hmm. in that one mm -hmm. scene so I thought that was good no I, I hear you no that you're right but there, there there's some things that we can learn a lot now are there some k-dramas that you disliked or felt like you know you didn't like I always like to ask this question because I'm always curious um I can't recall any in particular um mm -hmm. mainly because you know if by like the first or second episode if it's really bad we just stop or I yeah. just stop and then one if it's like really hyped or people are like you have to watch it I'll give it up to six episodes oh wait you know there was one that I didn't really like um uh I think I had talked about it on Instagram it was one where oh, it's, it's the one that was a goblin wannabe kind of like with a, a doom, doom at your service yes I I I went six episodes, maybe even seven. And I was like, I just can't. I, there wasn't I, I enough the build, you know, they just mm -hmm. kind of gave everything away within the first couple of episodes. And yeah. there was just no mystery. There was no building of the relationship. And so that's why I, mm -hmm. sometimes if the eye candy is really good, I'll keep watching, but <laughs> Me too. There's always good eye candy. No, that, no, I was like that too. But I always like to ask, cause you know, you're right. We can always stop watching if we're tired and yeah. So do make your service. I, I agree with you. That's awesome. Well, as we wrap up this podcast episode, any last words that you want to share or just, you know, surrounding K dramas and mental health and specific K drama that reached out to you. I always give people like a last word that they want to say. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that your watchers and listeners are already key drama fans, but if you know anybody where Squid Game was like the first thing that they watched, you know, I, mm -hmm. I would encourage them to explore other key dramas because it's just like a whole new world and everyone's going to be so blown away. And also with the action um, type of dramas coming out like DP and such, I just feel like the key dramas are not just lighthearted fluffy romantic comedies there's some really great action movies and shows you know a lot of depth to the characters um and you know like my name really badass female characters yeah yeah well even hometown cha-cha-cha was had some depth to it with the story it was just not some simple rom-com which is why I love oh my it. gosh was, yes that yeah. one that one is very I it touched on so many themes I could talk forever about that one. It was, it was really good. <laughs> it was really good. And, and, and yeah, I'll be doing some deep dives on it, but you're right. It was really good. I'm glad to hear you liked it as well. When someone else, like when you like a K-drama again, sense of belonging. I love when I hear yes. other people like love it too. And they're like, yeah, me too. Let's talk about it. And so that's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Sophia beauty unplugged for joining us. I'm so excited to have you and I can't wait to have you back with your husband. Okay. Join the Nina's <laughs> Podcast. Thanks Bye. for having me. Sure. You can listen in on platforms such as Spotify, Pandora, Google, and Apple, but also watch the podcast on our Nina's Nichi YouTube channel every Monday where it launches at 6 p.m. Eastern.